Hello! So, in this video, I want to discuss the Imaginarium Theater and Genshin's endgame content. So, if you're not aware of what the Imaginarium Theater is, it's a new permanent event that requires you to select 18 characters to participate in the challenge. The characters and the elemental types will change each season. So, in order to succeed in this event, you have to have plenty of built characters. I'm really only going to be discussing hard mode because that's what you need to complete in order to get all of the rewards. So once you've completed it, you'll be able to obtain quite a bit of Primo Gems uh, every season. This will reset and you'll be able to obtain those again. Uh, and there is a debut performance gift. I'm not sure how long this will last. It might last permanently and just whenever the first time you clear it, you'll be able to get these extra rewards. But once you've cleared it, I, these rewards aren't going to reset. Now it also does require your characters to be at least level 70, but if you don't have enough characters or if your characters aren't built enough, you are able to invite supporting cast characters. Now supporting cast characters are characters that your friends can share, uh, including their builds, and then you can add them into your party while in the Imaginarium Theater. There's a limit to how this can work, um, looks like you can only assist your friends up to 15 times, and you can only set up to 7 characters. And they'll only be able to invite characters that meet the requirements for that season. So in Season 1, you have to have Pyro, Electro, or Animo characters. It could be any number of those mixes. You are given a choice of trial characters each season. If you already have the characters available, it'll show them down there, so you're able to pick and choose which one would be better. The trial characters do have some artifacts, but they're really not built that well, and they kind of have some odd aspects to them, like Arlecchino using Ballad of the Fjords, which can definitely work, and EM can be beneficial to her, but it's definitely not something that anyone will typically put on them. So other than the opening characters, which are the characters that you will be able to select from when you very first start the Imaginarium Theater, you also need to select the remaining 12 characters from the list of your character pool. They do give you a couple special guests, although you are required to own them in order to access them. The special guests are designated selectable characters that do not meet the elemental requirements for that season. So in this case, it's characters that aren't Pyro, Electro, or Animo. And we have Baiju, Alhatham, Siegeween, and Risley. Now on this screen, you can still get to all the characters' builds. You just have to click on Equipment Config. And then you'll be able to access all the characters that are available for this season. But once you've set up your cast, it's time to go to the challenge. And then you get a confirmation screen of all the characters you chose. Now here you're given some options that are kind of random. So you'll have an option to select a different companion randomly. So this one would be Electro. This is just any random companion um, from any element that are you have available. A Wondrous Boon is typically a benefit. Um, they give you some extra damage, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but they can also have caveats, so they might not be as beneficial as you think all the time. You are given an option to reset all these, um, so we can refresh this, and it'll re-roll everything. Now it looks like we actually have now an option to choose between two different battles. Uh, you spend these flowers on your companions and any benefits you want to try and roll for. You don't actually have to use either of these, but it's definitely suggested that uh, you start rolling for some characters so that we can easily build some teams. Alright, so I get to pick between Linny and Sino, which is something I wouldn't really want right now because I have plenty of DPSs up here, so um, I'll go with Linny. Prepare to be amazed! See, now I only have 20 flowers, so if I want, I could do this one. But this one gives me more flowers. Now, in order to get the bonus 20 flowers, I'm going to have to trigger Swirl Reaction 15 times. So the Star Challenge, I actually don't know 100%, but I'm pretty sure that this is what you need to obtain in order to get the rewards. Um, you know, the Primo Gems and whatever else it was that they had available. Any sort of stage effect will be located here. This one actually has a couple of them. 
So, a period of time after the challenge begins, Thunder will descend and strike your characters as one of them. Um, danger zones that constantly move will appear when the challenge begins. When a character is in these dangerous areas, you will take true damage from the prohibition for every two seconds you stay within the danger zone. Okay, interesting. I don't think I've encountered that one. But, get to see the list of enemies down there. So you probably already noticed these little lightning bolts down here by the characters. That is called Vigor. That's basically how many uses you can use um, each character. So each character initially has two Vigor. Once you've used up all your Vigor, that character is no longer able to be added into your principal cast or the pool of characters you can actually choose from when you're building your teams in the battles. It is possible to get some buffs. Um, I forget it's from if it's from the Mystery Cache or the Wondrous Boon. But there are some buffs that will restore vigor to characters, and even to some characters that don't have any vigor left. So let's say you use up all of Wanderer's vigor, then you could possibly pull a card to add another vigor, so that way you can actually use him a third time. I think might as well just go for this one because, you know, get some more flowers. Everyone likes flowers, right? They do give you the options to easily just restart just like they do in the Abyss. Um, rewind, I believe, takes you back uh, before you selected any of the cards, and you need to at least make it to Act 3, so I'll actually do that just to make sure of what it does when I get to Act 3. So when you select Begin Performance, you're able to build your party here, and you are able to go in here and see all the characters that you do have available. And I guess you can't adjust them. I thought that you could adjust their build, but you can actually just preview their build, it looks like. So I need to swirl 15 times and defeat all the opponents within 85 seconds. So I'll just do something like this, I suppose. A lot of the time you're going to end up building teams that are a bit odd. Uh, last night I even used a team with Arlecchino and Clorand in the same team because that's just what I ended up having available because I wasn't rolling for characters. Um, oh, that's the danger zone, so watch out for the danger. I've already done the 15 squirrels, which is pretty easy with this team. Well, there we go. Alright, so after the end of each performance, They'll randomly pop up one character here that uh, you can add to your party again. Or add to your cast, anyway. Uh, once you finish every battle, you actually can get up and walk around and talk with the characters that you just had out, which is pretty interesting. They seem to say something about this place, uh, at least the few that I've talked to. So I think they might have some new lines, uh, but I could be mistaken on that. But, you can see now we're on to Act 2. Uh, there are going to be some boss levels in between here. Uh, Mystery Cache is the other sort of card that you can get. These ones are free. They don't cost you any flowers. Um, but they can definitely have some downsides. Uh, more so than the boons. So when choosing a Wondrous Boon event, you can reset selectable effects one time. I don't really know what that means but I'll go with it. Uh, let's go with a Wondrous Boon. Okay, so that's what the mystery cache gave me. I can redraw these. Actually, let's see what happens. Okay. Well, I'll go with this one. Now, if you're curious as to anything that you've selected, you can go into the performance details at the bottom and bottom selection shows any of the benefits you've obtained so right now we have this wondrous boon so increase the attack of anyone who has their bond of life increase or de decrease well, let's do an elite a battle I suppose well I'll try this out Too 
Well, Arlecchino made light work of them. Alright, I should probably add another cast member. Uh, oh, so we got some external audience support. I don't know exactly how this works. I don't know if you have to own the characters in order to gain the support. But basically, the concept is there's all these characters that are watching your performance as you battle. Um, you know, you just have to imagine them being there cheering you on because, you know, it is the Imaginarium Theater after all. But anyway, Nilu gave me 25 flowers. How nice of her. Definitely gonna go with Chevros here. All right, team, let's move it out. Now you do have to select all three or all four characters in order to do the challenge, which I think is a bit of a letdown because sometimes I could definitely get away with just a couple of characters or even one character sometimes, but you have to select four characters. But yeah, this is definitely the hardest part of this is just trying to figure out how to build the teams. Sometimes you do just kind of have to throw someone in there um, if you want to keep someone. I know that eventually there's a boss that requires you to use Usia to destroy a shield to get the bonus. So I want to keep Lin, Linny, Lynette, I mean. So I think I'll put in Linny just to use him. Yeah, I really should have had an Electro character here. Well, there we go. Because I didn't have an Electro character, I wasn't able to exhaust it, or um, when you'd use Electro on this boss, it'll agitate it and start running around or doing a different attack, after which it'll kind of collapse to the ground and allow you to attack it there for a while. So I wasn't able to do that because I didn't use any Electro. I could have used Colorand in there just because, but I want to keep her for later. Oh, excellent. And we got Kazuma now. What is this one? I don't think I've come across this one yet. Oh, wow. So yeah, I definitely haven't come across this, so I just get to pick here what I want. So I could do Chevros, Dia, Chlorand, and Yai Miko, and that would make a very good Chevros team. Well, since you asked so nicely. And let's just see what what her spoon we can get. You know, this one sounds kind of fun, so I'll go with that one. All right, looks like we got some more external audience support. So that's another thing that they can do. Um, last time we got some flowers from Nilu. This time Shinyin is upgrading our buff here. How did she upgrade it though? Already enhanced. So maybe she actually didn't. <laughs> Normally it, she'll increase uh, something to do with these. Um, usually it's like if it's an attack boost, they'll increase how much attack boost you get. It looks like Shinyan didn't give me anything. <laughs> Alright, so we have three different battles to pick from, so I can kind of pick which one is going to be the best. So it's really just a choice of which care or which opponents you want to fight. It does give you some tips here, like this one, enemies are easily grouped together. And then rapid movement has an advantage, so that means basically just being able to kill them fast. Are you sure about that? I do have Kazuha, actually. Maybe I'll use Kazuha. I'll use, yeah. So I'll go with the ones that are easily grouped. Now, I did want to see what this rewind performance was. So once you get to Act 3, it does give you the option to rewind. Uh, that will take you back to the previous screen, so that way you can repick any sort of boons and stuff. And it does keep any of the wondrous boons, Mr. Caches, um, that you had up until that point. All that will be restored. However, uh, the records from the performance challenges from prior to using Rewind will not be saved. But you can really see how it kind of functions now. So the reason I wanted to make this video is because I wanted to discuss Genshin's endgame content. Now it seemed like for a while there it was really just the abyss and I had gotten to some discussions in Hoyo Lab with some people and a lot of people actually think that the Abyss uh, hasn't been the endgame content and that they've been working on it. So I haven't gotten to any more of those sorts of discussions yet about Imaginarium Theater, but that would mean that 
most likely this is supposed to be the endgame content. And with all the readjustment that they did with the Abyss, uh, changing it from resetting every two weeks to once every month, it would appear that this or the Abyss are supposed to be the endgame content. Now, I could definitely see how this could be endgame content, because um, you definitely need to work towards building a whole bunch of different characters. However, I still feel like Genshin is lacking any endgame content. I've completed Imaginarium Theater a few times, uh, every time it's taken me less than 10 minutes to complete all the battles, and if that's the endgame content, that's just, it's kind of sad, I think. <laughs> so I really don't think that this is it, but I could definitely see how it can be challenging, especially for new players. But for players like me who have been playing for years and love building a lot of different characters and using different characters, this has actually been a pretty big letdown for me. I still think the Abyss is much more of a challenge. The only challenge really here is if you haven't put enough time or money into the game in order to obtain enough characters. Once you've done that, uh, and I guess have put in enough time to actually build them, get the artifacts and that sort, it just really leaves you wanting more. I was really hoping that the enemies would be as challenging as the Floor 12 variants, or at least close to it, but most of the enemies are lower level than the characters, and so it just doesn't, they die within a couple of hits, and it just makes this much too easy. But I've really just been wanting something more to do with the characters. Now this definitely has some more interesting features than the Abyss, you know, because the Abyss, you do get the random cards that you pick from and that reset every day, but this one, it kind of, levels up that experience with all these different cards that you get and the variety of different cards that you can use. And I do like having to only pick from a select pool of characters in order to compete. It definitely does make it a bit more challenging, especially since you end up building some teams sometimes that really wouldn't make sense otherwise. But it just isn't challenging enough for me. What I would like to see is them add an expert difficulty. Because hard just isn't hard for me at all. It's uh, easy. So it'd be nice if they could just maybe require the characters on Expert to be level 90. Um, or maybe level 80, I guess, would be fine. And then also make the enemies perhaps the floor 12 variants. So they usually have more health than the overworld variants. But I just would really like to see something more I can do with the characters because I can really only challenge myself so many times in the abyss before it gets boring. Uh, at least the Imaginarium Theater it does add some randomness to it, um, both with the benefits you can get and the characters you can select, and that definitely does add a little bit of a challenge, but once you've built quite a few strong characters, it it's just a cakewalk. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Now there is one feature that I really like, the ending credits once you finish it. Now this end screen credit uh, I think is actually really cool. So there's a lot of features about the Imaginarium Theater that I really like. So the ending credit screens, it's going to give you some details about your performance. Uh, it'll tell you who did the most damage and how much. It'll highlight who defeated the most opponents and who took the most damage and tell you how many of the characters you used and your fastest team and then at the very end it'll show you how many flowers you use and if you use any supporting cast from your friends and finally you get to see the entire cast list uh, broken down by each act so you get to see what parties you used uh, in every act and it looks like this time it only took me 8 minutes and 14 seconds to complete. I think that's my fastest time. I wasn't even trying though. So one of the other things that you get, let's wake up Wolfie here, I'm taking a, a snooze. You can learn some thespian tricks. And really all that is, is at least right now, perhaps this will change later, uh, all you get is just some poses for the camera right now. I don't know if these are permanent. Perhaps you could tell me in the comments below if you know if they're uh, permanent. If so, it can be worth it to unlock some of these if you like the characters. 
Um, I just happen to... I like the characters, they're just none of these characters are my favorite, so I don't really take pictures of them that often, so... Um, I do think Raiden's pose here, though, is probably the coolest out of all of them. Definitely much better than Noelle's. I mean, really? Or Ayato's? I mean, I don't know. They just really aren't very interesting poses, uh, for, especially for those two anyway. The rest of them, um, like Chong Yoon there, it's a bit more interesting. So if we leave the Imaginarium Theater, I'll show you what that pose looks like. All right, so go to your camera, and here you can already adjust it, um, but you do get that extra one. And I don't see a timer or anything, so I think that these are permanent, but again, let me know in the comments. Uh, but yeah, you can take a picture. Pretty cool. Um, it sounds like perhaps eventually they'll add some sort of other thespian tricks where there's some sort of overworld benefit you get, but I don't know what that is right now. Editing whisper here. So I figured out that these are the overworld benefits here, the fantastical blessings. So any of these characters, whenever they are in your party, uh, max HP, attack, and defense are increased by 20%, and it takes effect both while in the Imaginarium Theater and then also just while you know, you know you're out here roaming around in the wilderness. But I think that's really about everything you'd need to know about the Imaginarium Theater, um, including all my opinions on it. What do you think? Is it challenging? Um, I could definitely see how it can be challenging for some players, especially new players. It's really going to have to be something you have to work for. But so is the Abyss. So I am back to making videos again. I'm going to try and not put so much pressure on myself to try and get these videos out. It just will take some time, but I am working on Chlorand. I want to do actually a series um, rather than like what I did with Al Haytham, where I kind of just grouped everything. Uh, into one video, at least as much as I could into one video. Um, instead, I'm going to start splitting that up. I think it'll be easier to get the information that way. So the first video is really just going to be like a how-to, uh, really just more of breaking down how her talents and stuff work. Because if you haven't looked at her talents, there's basically a book worth of text in there. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next one. Make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and feel free to check me out on Twitch. I stream every now and then. Um, a lot of the time it's actually no commentary because I just can't use my mic because it's late at night and don't want to wake up my wife, but feel free to join in. I'm always in, uh, in chat, so I'd be more than happy to chat with you there. All the links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.